Hello everybody. It's been a while. Welcome to this inaugural episode of Steve's Software Shack. I've been meaning to relaunch the channel for quite a while now and I figured I'd set the tone early. We're going to uh, switch things up. I'm not going to just look at soft drinks anymore. I'm going to look at whatever I want. And today we're going to look at some software. I recently played through this. Metro Exodus on PC. Um, had a few thoughts about it and I thought I would share those with you. So Metro Exodus launched this year in uh, 2019 on February 15th. It was developed by 4A Games from uh, Kiev, Ukraine, and it's actually the uh, third game in the Metro series. I haven't played the first two, I'll say that flat out, but it, uh, it really didn't get in the way of me playing this one at all. I know that they're shooters, I've heard that they're quite good, but uh, I haven't personally played them, so I can't recommend them or anything like that. So Metro Exodus, at its core, is a linear shooter. It uh, plays out uh, a lot like, say, the uh, original Crisis. You'll have a, a map where you have an objective on the opposite side, and rather than having just a series of linear corridors bringing you to uh, the objective, you actually have some, uh, some branching options. And, uh, you know, there's a day and night cycle, so you can uh, choose to approach different things at different times of day, strategize, do different things. Um, on your way to the objective, you'll encounter um, sometimes you'll encounter sub-objectives, NPCs, and a lot of enemy outposts. Um, you can approach these outposts and most of the combat um, in whichever way you would like. Um, you can do it stealthily. Uh, you can actually choose not to kill your enemies. Uh, or you can do it like I did and go in mostly guns blazing and, uh, and shoot everybody down. Uh, the game works either way. And it has a really, really excellent uh, weapon customization um, function. That, allows, uh, that really allows you to customize your weapons uh, to your own playstyle and customize your approaches. One example would be uh, you can get a revolver in the game. And this revolver you can take and um, just use it as a standard revolver. It works all right in that regard. Or uh, you might get a long barrel for it and a, uh, and a sniper stock and a, and a four times scope. And suddenly you have a, a pretty powerful... Uh, sniper rifle built from your revolver. It's not that one of these approaches is necessarily better than the other, it's just that the game gives you a lot of options. It's pretty cool. I enjoyed that aspect of it. You have mostly modern weapons, so like, uh, you know, assault rifles, pistols, shotguns. You're mostly fighting uh, humans, and they're not, they're not the most interesting. It, it's pretty bog standard uh, military combat, if you're used to that in a shooter. Um, there are uh, some cool mutated creatures. There's mutated lobsters, there's mutated gorillas, there's mutated um, bats. And they're interesting to fight, but unlike, say, Doom, where the game is constantly feeding you these interesting enemies and different combinations that uh, keep the game feeling fresh, in this game you'll fight ten humans at a time. And then you'll fight three lobsters. And then you'll fight three gorillas. And it's, it's just not that interesting. There's some boss battles, but um, they're dull. And a lot of the times, you just have to hammer enough damage into the boss, and you don't actually get to kill the boss. Once the boss takes enough damage, he runs away. Or then there's a cutscene where he dies. And I don't know, that takes away player agency. I don't think it's very fun. Um, it's putting the plot ahead of the gameplay, which, I mean, again, this is a story-heavy game. If that's what you're into, you might really enjoy it. It does it well. I'd also say the game uh, progressively gets more linear as you play it. The first few levels are quite open and there's uh, quite a few things to do outside of just the, uh, the main objectives. But particularly the last couple missions, they basically do become a corridor shooter and um, the game is less engaging because of it. I really, really liked that the game has a um, pneumatic gun called the Tihar. It's like uh, something that these people throw through together after this apocalypse. Um, where you have like an air gun and you pump it up and you put scrap metal in it and shoot it. That, that was really cool. I used it probably more than any other gun in the game. Because ammo is scarce, but you can just make more ammo for that uh, all you want. And you just got to pump it up. Uh, 
to fire. And that bit's cool because you have to manage your pressure. There's different mods that you can get for the gun that will, you know, automatically fill up the bottle or allow you to overcharge the bottle. It's cool. It, it's pretty fun. I liked it a lot. Throws anything off yet, darling? <laughs> Here, let's warm you up a little bit. The game is very plot heavy, and this is something that um, maybe I'm just getting older. I don't really have as much patience for anymore. You have a lot of these excellent combat sections. You'll you'll get into a great shootout, and then you've got to spend 30 minutes on a train with your girlfriend and her dad. And there's lots of talking. There's like snuggling buttons. You can have cigarettes with your with your dudes. In that sense, it reminded me a lot of Red Dead Redemption 2. You can hang out with your, with your crew and get a lot of uh, additional story information. And you can just blaze through it if you want, which I kind of did a lot of the time. And I felt like I was probably missing out on, on part of the game. Um, the story itself explored quite a few interesting themes. Um, slavery, religion, cults, just general ethics. Um, but perhaps, yeah, the, the strongest theme, if you haven't guessed it already, would be love. The love plot between your character, Artyom, and his girlfriend, Anna. Um, it's cool. It drives most of the narrative um, in an odd way that feels refreshing in a shooter. It's, it's not all that common. The game felt uh, pretty good. I played it on the PC, of course, with a keyboard and mouse, and it felt like it was designed for that. You didn't get any of that weird um, input lag that you sometimes get from console ports. Um, the field of view was nice and wide. Um, I thought it felt great as a PC game. Uh, the animations in the world were fantastic. Um, everything that your character does looks great. Um, the 3D models are very detailed. And uh, that adds to the immersive factor. But the, the thing that really uh, makes this game immersive are the graphics and the sound. Um, one, the art design's phenomenal. You go to a number of locations that just look gorgeous. They're well lit. It's a really pretty game in that regard. But I uh, played it on my PC with an RTX 2080 video card, which means I got to turn on the uh, NVIDIA RTX features. I didn't use the DLSS. I just ran it at 4K at uh, 0.5 uh, shading rate. Looks good. But I did have the ray-traced global illumination. You might think, yeah, ray tracing gives you good reflections, but that's actually not the case here. They're not using the ray tracing for reflections at all. You'll see in this example that it's still using screen space reflections. Notice as the, uh, the parts of the building are no longer being rendered at the top of the screen, they can no longer be present in the reflections because that data isn't there to make uh, reflections with. Um, so they're not using it for reflections. They're using it just for global illumination. And so any light coming from the sky will be accurately uh, cast and bounced around the geometry. You'll really see a difference in scenarios where you have, say, a lot of indoor spaces with lots of occlusion going on, but um, it's still being lit by natural light. Once you have uh, artificial light sources, things like flames and uh, just other light sources in the world, those aren't really being calculated by the GI and they look the same as they ever did. So in the actual uh, metro sections where you're actually in the sewers, you don't really get any of that ray trace goodness. Um, I won't get too far into that. You can check out Digital Foundry's video. They really uh, summed it up a lot better than I ever could. Um, and they'll have better quality examples if that's something you care about. It really is almost a paradigm shift to see real-time ray tracing in a computer game. As a long time uh, computer nerd, graphics nerd, I've been hearing about this possibility for decades, and it's really cool to see it um, to see it in action. It's not a real like fully path traced uh, renderer. It's still a traditional rasterized renderer just using ray tracing to do the global illumination, but it's it's cool. It looks great. I hope to see more games using these uh, features in the future. In conclusion, would I recommend Metro Exodus? Sure. At 20 bucks, it's a no-brainer for anybody. If you like shooters, it's pretty fun. If you're really into story-based shooters, um, play it at full price. It's pretty good. But, yeah, I don't know. 50 bucks, that's a tall ask, in my opinion. Finally, to all of you who have uh, been waiting for more content, uh, who are maybe wishing I would do more soft drink content, you're in luck. I've got a few in the fridge. I'll be doing those in the near future. Stay tuned.